Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I had intended to do something completely different than today, but I found a problem. And, and so that's what we're going to be talking about next, right after this. And I had never really intended the channel to, uh, to be a security issues, but security is definitely at the forefront in all of our minds uh, today, both in terms of protecting our privacy, protecting our data, pr protecting <laughs> our financial information, all of that. And so today I'm going to talk about TPM fail. And Houston, we've had a problem. So let's take a look and see what that problem is. But before we quite jump into it, let's talk a little bit about what TPM is. Uh, TPM is the Trusted Platform Module, and it is complex. It comes in a software form called the uh, firmware-based TPM. It also comes in a hardware form, which is the TPM on a chip. And uh, it, it does... I mean, this this is an over this chart is a, is a little bit old, but it's also an oversimplification of of um, of the <laughs> actual things that uh, TPM does. But um, if you look at it this way, it has a random number generator, and that's pretty important in cryptography because you have to have an adequate random number generator that is sufficiently uh, sufficiently randomized that it provides keys that are not easily discernible. Uh, it also has an RSA key generator. It has a SHA generator. Now that key, that shows SHA one. SHA one is no longer used, by the way. Uh, <clears throat> there, it also has an encryption decryption signature engine, which allows it to act as a <clears throat> a, uh, a cryptographic accelerator. So it can both generate the key and it can also decipher the key very quickly. <clears throat> it also has some uh, a store SRK EK. Those are the persistent memory. Those are protected memory within the chip, which allows it to prevent the uh, information from being exposed uh, externally by to either a physical access attack or from a remote attack over the network. Uh, it has versatile memory again uh, to to uh, attempt to uh, protect the uh, keys that it has generated. But there are so many more things that it does. This is like I said, a really oversimplification. So what's going on here? What happened? So the uh, the uh, the research researchers have have termed this TPM fail, and it is a it is an attack on the uh, cryptographic coprocessors that the researchers did. And they have exposed, and they have exposed a vulnerability. So TPM serves as the hardware-based root of trust for operating systems. I mean, it is used in everything today. Uh, Windows uh, Server 2019 is is heavily based on TPM. There, the Windows Hello is based on TPM. Uh, Windows 2016 is based on TPM, uh, and Windows 10. By that, I mean that they have support for TPM. And it is an integral part of the operating system security in Windows, that all the way from secure UEFI boot, all the way to password and, and PIN number uh, entry so that you can gain access to the, to the system. It is used in BitLocker. I mean, it <laughs> literally is used everywhere. So, TPM, so what happened? The TPM2 was uh, analyzed by a group of researchers uh, on consumer grade systems. So this isn't just enterprise systems or server based platforms. This is systems like your laptop, my laptop, our desktop machines, our motherboards, uh, in order to determine it, whether TPM was as secure as we thought it was. And so the researchers have discovered uh, that on some devices that a feature dependent execution time uh, would would surface during the uh, ex during the signature generation on elliptic curves, and so what the heck does that mean? So uh, it basically means that a timing leakage occurs on the Intel firmware based TPM <clears throat> or the FTPM chip. Uh, if you uh, if and so you can then take lattice techniques. Uh, which is a software uh, a way of collecting information that is leaked out of the processor in order to reassemble, uh, and they took it and retrieved a 256B 
uh, bit private key for uh, the elliptic curve and EC Schnorr version of the signatures to actually retrieve the private key. Those attacks took, they were frighteningly fast. They took four to 20 minutes to perform. There's one that takes uh, maybe a couple of days, but in this aspect, uh, yeah, that was pretty quick to turn around and grab the private key. And the attacker didn't have to, they didn't have to do anything other than observe, just listen on the uh, network channel from a web server. They attacked a web server that had a, uh, an SSL cert, and then they just basically listened until they got enough leakage to assemble the private key. Now, once you have that, not only can you generate private keys, or excuse me, not only can you generate the public key, but you can also uh, decipher anything that uh, is being uh, uh, encoded by that private key. So they also found it not only on the FTPM, but they also found it uh, in a digital signature in the case of a strong swan IPsec VPN. So that's very specific. However, Intel has released a firmware patch uh, as of 11-12-2019. So that patch is out that, that addresses this problem. Uh, so I guess maybe take a step back. What is TPM? Uh, it's, it serves as the root of trust for computer systems. Most of the laptops and desktop computers come with a dedicated TPM chip today. Uh, or they use the Intel firmware-based TPM, uh, which runs on a separate micro coprocessor inside the CPU. So uh, those have been around since Intel's Haswell. So since 2013, we've had TPM available. Now, TPM2 is where they found the problem in those early processors. It's an older version of TPM. But TPM is also found in your cell phone. It's also in embedded devices. It's used by Chromebooks and <laughs> ARM, AMD, uh, uh, Ryzen Pro includes a TPM inside the CPU. So. Uh, it is pretty widespread uh, technology today. Uh, not only that, but it's also used in the server farms. It's in Amazon's cloud on AWS. It's in Microsoft's uh, Azure cloud as well. So, I mean, it's everywhere. So let's talk a little bit about the boundaries of the test. Let's narrow this down so we don't, you know, so we don't go running around saying that the sky is falling because it's not... It's not quite as bad as, as some of the uh, industry uh, paints it, but it's still a pretty significant problem. Uh, the leakage is only found, like I said, on Intel firmware-based chips and on STM, uh, uh, ST microelectronics TPM chips. That one uh, did, both of those exhibit the secret-dependent execution times during the cryptographic signature generation. So those two specific instances have this issue. Uh, the keys are, should remain safe inside of a TPM-based uh, hardware. It should not, you know, that shouldn't be a problem. For if, if you have TPM-based hardware on your machine, that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, the researchers were able to, like I said, to extract a 256-bit uh, uh, digital signature, uh, private key, excuse me, the private key based on the digital signature scheme for elliptic curves. So, um, it is a very specific instance. It is a very specific type of cryptographic encryption. But elliptic curves are pretty widespread in use today as well. So, uh, so there's a high chance that you may be affected by this. If your computing system, your laptop, your desktop, your tablet, or your cell phone, if they're using the Intel FTPM, or they have an STM micro, if they have a, I keep saying an ST micro electronics TPM chip, then you may be affected. Uh, the only thing I can tell you is that TPM, I, I've looked for TPM specs for a long time whenever I'm looking for a new machine and I end up having to call the OEM because they just, I don't know why, but they just don't publish whether or not they're using a TPM chip or they're using firmware. So I would contact whoever made your motherboard, who's ever, whoever made your machine and find out if you are affected by this and if you are, uh, see if there's the, uh, see if they have the uh, firmware that was released by uh, Intel and install it as as, as soon as you can. Uh, so I yeah I would check and see if they know about the TPM fail. Uh, a couple of uh, my final thoughts on this. Um, you know, security research takes a lot longer than products get introduced into the marketplace. So businesses are making decisions to release products and not only release them but they are blowing them out as fast as they can. It's becoming pervasive. And so when a problem like this occurs, it becomes really important to try to figure out what's going on with it and try to get it fixed. 
So, uh, yeah, I think that problem is going to be with us for a while. I just wish it didn't happen. I wish that, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I, I know it's not going to happen. Corporations are not going to spend the money to do that, that kind of security research before a product is released. Their time frames just won't allow it. But uh, some comments on Bruce Snyder's website. I uh, talked about this being a possible NSA backdoor. I doubt it. Uh, it would be more likely that this is just bad code <laughs> because, first of all, it's not pervasive. It's only two, two specific areas of the TPM uh, variations, one chip and then the Intel uh, firmware-based TPM. So, uh, no, I don't think this would be uh, – I, mean, I don't think the NSA would just pick on that. If they wanted to open a backdoor, they would open a backdoor throughout every TPM chip. Uh, so, I, yeah, I think it's just bad, bad code. Uh, one thing to me about this is pretty clear that the products are being widely introduced before they're intensely scrutinized for defects and flaws. Uh, and, I, and I wish that, that uh, I've said this before in other videos, but I wish that these vendors would get together and figure out a scenario of tests. Get, get together with the academics that are doing research like this and come up with a set of tests that at least they would have some confidence level that this isn't going to create some snowball effect later on. Uh, so I, I firmly believe that we really need to include tests that look for flaws in our security, specifically in products like this, where it forms the basis of our, the root basis of uh, the circle of trust. So with that, I... Uh, I think I think I have said my piece on TPM. Um, it isn't a sky is falling kind of a problem. It only affects very specific areas of TPM. If uh, if if you think you have this issue, uh, you might contact your vendor. And, and so that's why I'm going to close this today. I hope you enjoyed this video today. If you did, please like and subscribe. And as always, hope to see you again real soon. And bye for now. Thank you.